Well, welcome back to the Digital Ramble. I am JJ Cannon here in Houston, joined by my very good friend and co-host, Chris Gamble. How you doing, my friend? Hey, JJ. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Episode 20 of the Digital Ramble today. 20. It's been yeah. a it's been a fantastic 20 episodes. I <laughs> say it every time. I love coming into booth on Mondays and sitting down and talking tech with you. Yeah, and episode 20 leads us nicely into the first of several episodes that we introduced last week with uh, smart spaces, smart areas in the home, the home being a collection of smart spaces that you can tackle one room or area at a time. And the first one is really the biggest space, the most highest group fall, probably got the most tech, it's where everyone hangs out. We're going to be tackling the smart kitchen today. Smart kitchen is on deck and we're going to go through and talk about the devices that are already deployed and other devices that you might want to incorporate into this new smart kitchen and what does it really mean to you as well as the the future of how your family operates there in that smart space the kitchen yeah no we hit we hinted last week you know we it was came up in the conversation really how the kitchen has always embraced the latest technology and and even going back you know post-war 1950s 1960s the kitchen saw a huge influx of technology that assisted you with cooking and cleaning and you would get hot water um, you know through a central heating boiler or you would get um, appliances that lived in the house and didn't have to be out, outdoors anymore so the kitchen's always um, been one of the spaces in the home that's that's had the latest tech and that's no different today you know and, and one thing about the tech now gamble is it can help a man like myself i mean i try currently i'm not the best man for the job in the kitchen for some reason i get my temperatures wrong i get my measurements wrong and you know i kind of shy away from the kitchen but with these new assistants that you can imply in uh, apply in the kitchen, I think I think I might be able to get in there and, and you know produce some food that my family might like to to eat. And you know, before we get into it, I just want to say thank you to all our Patreons, you know, and our sponsors of the show. Thank you so much for all the appreciation that you uh, share with us throughout the week. And if you'd like to be a Patreon as well, please take a look at the Patreon page there. Uh, search just the Digital Ramble. Uh, I'm JJ Cannon, CEO of Digital Delight here in the Houston area. Been in business for over 20 years, and we are excited uh, that you decided to join us today as well. Okay, JJ, let's get into episode 20, The Rise of the Smart Kitchen. Let's get into it. All right, Gamble, so in the kitchen, where do you want to start? Where do you want to start in this kitchen? I want to talk about how the kitchen is, is probably the highest footfall area in the house. It's where everybody gathers for cooking, for eating, for catching up with each other's news for, you know, the end of the day, the beginning of the day. There's such a high volume of footfall there. And as soon as you put a lot of people in one space in a house, you better start providing that space with good connectivity, with good wireless coverage. I bet in your installations, JJ, you're making sure that kitchen's got great Wi-Fi. Oh, the kitchen is where everybody's hanging out. You know, we have these little islands and bar stools and all the families gathered around there. They also have some separate seating areas. And, you know, if you're on your device or have your device, and a lot of families do, you want to make sure that that Wi-Fi is nice and solid there in that space. You know, something else in the in the kitchen area, Gamble, that's really important is like all of your utilities are being utilized in that space. And so you got heat, you got fire, you got water, all that kind of stuff is, is going on in that space. And so a lot of cool things 
uh, that you can do with technology is monitor for moisture that might be under your sink or maybe under your dishwasher and things like that, which connect to your Wi-Fi. And so when we're talking about Wi-Fi, it's not only the, the devices that you might bring into the environment, but the devices that might actually live in that environment. And one for sure, it would be your uh, moisture sensors as maybe CO2 or fire sensors in that space. That's right. And um, the, the connected kitchen, the smart kitchen, not just the people in the space, but all the devices now requiring a connection to Wi-Fi or requiring a, a good Bluetooth connection or requiring, um, you know, a wired connection in some cases as well. Um, you should always be provisioning that kitchen with some of the best Wi-Fi coverage in any part of that building. Um, and also wiring for for devices that not just for the internet, but keeping things charged and powered. You know, the amount of um, times we've seen a kitchen that's inadequately wired for connecting appliances on the, on the countertop, so not enough places to charge phones to plug in, you know, voice assistant speakers or or screens like Google Home Hub or, or Echo Show Sonos speakers on the countertop. There's there needs to be a lot of power outlets, not just traditional kind of mains voltage. Think about USB, USB-C coming in. I'm starting to see wall points where you can charge uh, USB-C as well. Yeah, they make these electrical strips here in the States that connect up underneath to your cabinets that are module. And so as device charging needs change, because, you know, Apple, they always got something new you know, uh, or Android, like you were saying, they have that C charger. And so if you want different charging that, that takes something different than your traditional plug or your USB, they're making modules that you can quickly order and swap out to get whatever type of new device that you might need charging. That's, that's a good one, man. Yeah. Charging in that kitchen and having enough outlets to, to power everything is crucial. I think what we'll see more, uh, integrated into the kitchen is wireless charging. So just those kind of sensor, that pads, that charger pads that you can put underneath the counter, uh, maybe, um, you know, a, a docking station for, for several devices. Um, I think kitchen manufacturers are, are getting much more tuned in to the need for devices living in the kitchen. And, and kitchen manufacturers and, and you know, kitchen designers, we're seeing them embrace smart appliances, like the fridge, the, the washing machine, the tumble dryer, the, the dishwasher, even the tap. You know, we're seeing so much tech um, that needs a connection or needs um, fulfillment. We're seeing devices that need replenished. And, and one of the devices you, you found was um, a device that helps you add things to shopping lists, add um, reminders to you to, to stock up. Yeah, I found this really cool website, um, and it's a blog, and it talks about 11 best smart kitchen devices. And, you know, as I'm going through this list and seeing everything, obviously everything's connected to the Wi-Fi. So like we've been talking about for, you know, 19 episodes and then some Wi-Fi and network connectivity to that kitchen is absolutely crucial. Hey, Mike, would you pull up this website here? And uh, there we go, Gamble. I have it on the screen. And as I'm scrolling down through here, like that Mr. Coffee smart Wi-Fi enabled coffee machine, you know, and still you, somebody needs to load it with uh you know, the ingredients, but it allows you to set up a schedule, which is pretty cool. I don't know if the price is right for me. The crock pot. Oh man. You, you like the crock pot. You do a lot of crock potting over there. We're, we're slow cookers. We, yeah. We, we get the, the slow cooker loaded up in the morning, ready, mainly in the winter. Um, but get that ready with a stew or a, or some soup or something has been, you know, thrown into this pot in the morning to have some kind of connection with our slow cooker, I think would be ideal so we can adjust the temperature. Remotely. Uh, you know, monitor that device and, and turn it on or off remotely if we are going to be uh, late coming home. 
I think I think I might be gaining some weight during this episode, Gamble. <laughs> <laughs> they also had this thing, the intelligent frying pan. I, nah, I, don't, know, I don't know about that. All right, I'm going to keep on going here. This one, this one is where I really could could use some help, and it's the drop kitchen non-slip silicon connected kitchen scale. You know, and what I love is is that you and it's great for baking so you set your bowl on top of it and then it has an app and this app gives you all the ingredients so it gives you visual assistance on what ingredients as well as all the tools you need you know tools is crucial to what we do on a daily basis you know out in the field hanging televisions and installing thermostats knowing what tools you need in the kitchen is perfect for a guy like me you know, yeah. it's like because <laughs> I don't necessarily know all the tools. The other thing is, is that the app allows you to adjust for the quantity of people of whoever you're going to be uh, serving. Uh, so yeah. it gets your measure measurements uh, uh, accurate, so that you you can make the right quantities. Thanks. So I think ever ever since uh, iPad, even even the smartphone as well, so tablets and smartphones. They've started to find a place in the kitchen on the countertop, especially for cooking, pulling up a recipe, you know, cookbooks, as much as they're, you know, people enjoy the, the print of them and, the, and maybe the, the dialogue that goes along with the recipe from that famous chef or, or whoever. But the iPad and, the, and the, the phone have really become the, the cookbook for the kitchen. And we're big fans in, in our kitchens and our clients. We're starting to encourage them to using their Google Home Hub or an Echo Show, as an example, two different products that are very similar, a touch screen in the house that you can talk to for voice assistant. It's a speaker. You can play some music through it. You can ask it to control your lights. You can check on cameras, um, monitor the other parts of the home. So a real multi-skilled tech item. And I would highly encourage anybody out there if you wanted to add something smart to your kitchen that would be a great first addition and um, first of all put something in the kitchen that allows you to control future purchases you know and and that's a good space for the tablet you know the t tablet came in with a roar and then smartphones have kind of taken back you know a dominance as far as use purpose but the tablet is perfect for the kitchen, especially for, you know, I, I have clients wondering where can we place the television in the kitchen? You know, I really don't want it on the counter. I got my cabinet space up over here, but we want to watch television. And so with streaming capabilities, that tablet really comes, you know, handy uh, for watching maybe streaming services like a YouTube TV or a Netflix or something like that but also allows you to access those recipes. And it's also a tool that, that a lot, in the kitchen is probably the place that you need to be most hands-free mm. out of almost every environment. So you can do that voice control and those voice commands for like you were saying, adjust the lights because you need good lighting in the kitchen as well, uh, or pull up some ingredients. Yeah, I think, I think lighting is something that always needs to be planned if you're if you're doing a, a kitchen makeover, a refurbishment of your kitchen, think about the lighting, that under cabinet lights, that overhead lighting, lighting over your island, any dining areas. Think about different lighting for different parts of that kitchen. Lighting for mood, lighting for tasks, lighting for nighttime, you know, different, different scenarios. I, I like to, to go into my kitchen late at night. I've got a preset, you know, nighttime, and it's so dimly lit because I'm maybe going in there to get a glass of water, maybe some snacks, maybe to get something for, you know, one of our kids is woken up to get some medicine or whatever. I just need to go in there and I don't need to light the place up. I just need some, some focused lighting or very soft lighting. So really plan the lighting in your kitchen. Speak to your kitchen designer, speak to your home technology pro, and they together will come up with a really cool lighting scheme. and Make it easy to work as well. Preset. Yeah. My my preset is set for midnight snack. And so when I wake up, I just say, Madam A, midnight snack. And it gently illuminates my path to the kitchen in a glorious way. And I open up that fridge and it just oh, angelically illuminates for me automatically. And I'm able to get, I'm, I'm able to get a bowl of cereal. 
<laughs> I saw a very cool fridge recently where you don't have to open it to see what's inside it. Uh, I think it was an LG appliance. and so it's, it's got, got a got, camera on the inside. It's got a camera on the inside, and you just double tap the what's like a big, large touch screen. Double tap that, and it instantly shows you what's inside. So they think that a, so much energy per year is wasted on people standing there with the fridge open, looking around, especially kids. Kids hang on the door, looking around, never take anything out. They just look, you know, and keeping that appliance at a constant temperature can, can really uh, help the energy usage. And I mean, if you want to dig a little deeper, I mean, a couple of one, one simple one is from the sofa. <laughs> this is our one. <laughs> you can look inside your fridge to see what's there, right? But also your fridge will communicate with maybe your scale or maybe with your oven and say, yeah, we got these ingredients that are available to us. What can we make? Yeah. You know, that's true artificial intelligence that, that still needs data to be put into. So artificial intelligence is really not quite there yet, but that's what is to come. You know, is that type of behind the scenes creativity that allows you to function easier and smoother? I, I really think one of the big up and coming subscription models that, that we're going to all buy into soon is around food. And it's around food that we buy, you know, the, making sure we're getting the healthiest food, the, the, the best food, uh, maybe fair trade sourced or it's locally sourced or it's seasonal. It's a big one in our house. We don't, we try not to eat things that are not seasonal. Man, you know, see over here, <laughs> Tex-Mex is always in season. I mean, I mean, <laughs> okay. gelatas all the time. <laughs> I really think that people are going to possibly cook less or cook kind of prescribed meals based on their body weight, based on their uh, health, based on their dietary requirements, because there's a lot of complications there from households with different dietary requirements for each person. And I think that may see a new subscription to food providers, pre-prepared meals delivered in the right quantities, so we're not overeating, we're getting the right nutrition, and we're getting the right uh, things to help our, our dietary requirements. Yeah, I, I'd like something that helped me with variety. You know, it's like it takes my daily, you know, what I what I traditionally like to eat and kind of mixes it up and gives me some type of a fusion of, hey, man, you like these types of items, go out and try something like that. Hey, you know what? I'm scanning through this uh, this top 11. Mike, pull this up. And this is one that I definitely know that you'll like. It is called the Soma Bar Robotic Bartender. Oh, this on the list, yeah. Uh, Especially this weekend. That would be great. Bank holiday weekend in the UK. Blazing sunshine. It, it'll make your drink perfect for you. I wonder if it does champagne. I know that you're a man of the bubbly. That, that just comes in the bottle ready to go. <laughs> No, no need to that stick it be, in the machine. That could really, though, that could really wreck your week if you had one of them, though. Oh man, we, we have margarita too, machines, not martini machines. Too convenient, you know. I'm thinking Wednesday night cocktails, Thursday night. It's just it could just get real bad. Things uh, could change a lot. What, what would be bad is that this thing sets you up on a schedule. That would be. <laughs> 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 that would not be good <laughs> if that machine sets you up on a schedule. No, man, they got all kinds of stuff. Like in the kitchen, they got this little iRobot Brava Jet 240 mopping robot. I mean, I guess if you don't have a dog, you'd get one of these things here. Well, the, ki the kitchen's traditionally, it's, the, it's one of the messiest rooms in the house. You know, it's, it's always needing clean. The countertops, you know, the floor, sure. You know, there's the countertops are definitely always clean. The floor, Shaggy might have something to say about that. He, he'd be upset if you question his job. You know, <laughs> he's like, I yeah. keep this floor pretty clean around here. I've still yet to be fully convinced by the robot cleaner. Um, do, you, do you guys, I'll tell you what we came across in a, in a kitchen. It was a, like a central vac system, and they're not common in the UK at all. Are they still a thing in the States? Do you oh, see yeah. That in yeah, absolutely. I said the Roombas. 
Okay. Yeah, the Roombas, and I see them in clients' homes. I have never had one, so so I really can't, you know, say how efficient that they are. Um, no, that seems like a great idea. Oh, well, the central vac systems, though. Do you still have those? The central. Oh, where you kind of take a hose and you plug it into yeah. the wall. Yeah. We we there's there's clients that use those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always see that. I always think of that as a very American household thing. Yeah, we just, I like them. I like the in the kitchen. I've seen them. You know what, Gamble? I've seen that HVAC in the kitchen before, to where it's in the kick plate, and they open up the yeah. kick plate and they sweep it up and whoosh, sucks it right yeah. up. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, I like I that. Do. All right, one more. This this is number eleven. And this is the one. The yeah. one I want to get to. This is the haiku. On. I'm always forgetting stuff. Yeah. When I go to the market, I always forget. I have these handwritten notes, and I, guys, I always forget things. You know, I use Madam A, and I'd create a shopping list with her, and just trying to get everybody on board to use that same platform sometimes is a challenge. And then, uh, you know, yelling and getting the order wrong or, you know, it's just – I, I don't like it. And so with this haiku, the shopping button is pretty cool. It's it's this little round deal that has one flat side just so you can set it on the counter. But it also has a magnet so you can stick it on the fridge or something that, you know, it'll magnetize to. And it looks like it's really cool and form factor shape, um, you know, shape for your hand so the kids can use it also. But my understanding is you push the button and you can speak into it. Or it also has like this scanner deal, so you can scan the barcode, which I which I really like, and and it downloads it up into their app. And you can shop yourself through the app, or you can also push it through like a PO, <laughs> and it goes to your different uh, resources, shopping sources, and then it can be delivered to your house. And well, one of the one of the devices that kind of came around a few years ago, but we never saw it increase in popularity much is the the replenishment buttons the amazon dash buttons that you could quickly recall a a, a, a long-standing purchase and, and get that detergent or get that dishwasher tablets or get that um you know breakfast cereal even you could have a like a replenishment button in the location where that product normally lives and when you see it's getting low uh-huh. you hit that button and it would add it to like Amazon pantry or something. So that's really for me didn't take off. So man, trying to get, trying to get all my cans back in the same spot is, is a challenge for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm trying to like keep all my soups over here. Nice and neat. And all the frijoles cans of beans <laughs> over here, you know, but for some reason, I, I guess it's my kids that get in there whenever I'm when I'm away from the house and they're digging for stuff back there, and I can't ever get the cans in the same spot. So the easy button is not so easy. So c- can and fire today is going to be trying to keep your kitchen organized, is it? No, you got, no. You know, can and fire this week. Yeah, I'm doing. I am doing can and fire this week, but this week's can and fire, fire the guns. This week's Cannon Fire, I'm kind of talking about um, homeowner assistance. And I think you'll know what I'm talking about when I get into this, and you, and you can opine with me a little bit on this one. But, you know, as uh, it's, it, what we do for a living is, is really difficult gamble, making dumb homes smart, you know. And uh, we'll have a client that will commission us to come out and do some really technical stuff. And then other jobs are really straightforward and, and easy to use and nothing highly engineered. It's just getting them up and up, up and running. And uh, it never fails. You know, out of every, I don't know, 30 clients or something like that, they, they have a, a brother-in-law or a, or a, a son who, who really knows tech really well. And something comes up in a conversation, I'm sure over – over the holidays, this probably happened around your family table, you know, here in the States or maybe over there in the UK, you know, where, where there was a tech problem and somebody said, you know what, I can fix that. And, um, you know, once, once a, a, a smart home professional has been in a home, it's laid out in a very strategic way of how things operate. And whenever we get these homeowner assistants, you know, that, that come in to try to alleviate, you know, a problem that might, uh, that might 
or a pain point that might be underlying could cause it to be even more problematic for for the homeowner in a sense in a, in a uh, here here's an example had a homeowner we we go in we deploy a really nice uh, system for them for a whole house audio distribution we have a smart remote in there for them and uh, they have a computer that's way over in the corner that's not connected to the to the wi-fi or in the past they had had problems connecting it to the wi-fi so uh, their son comes over and says hey you know what i can help you with that and mama goes into the closet and pulls out that old netgear router and they plug it right into that comcast router and the system for some reason doesn't want to work and you know behind the scenes i always describe it to our clients is like a router is like a an indian chief and you put two indian chiefs in the same camp they want to fight all the time and that's essentially what two routers are doing and so not being aware and understanding how certain devices work and function with one another could it cause you know a, a more problematic uh, situation there in your house than what you were originally experiencing. So my, my request to homeowners that might find some additional pain points or find some problems in their technology, please reach out to a home technology professional, especially if you've had one in your home, and let them make them aware of what else you're experiencing. And if there's something that you can attempt on your own, ask them what you're considering and it's very possible yes go ahead and do that but prior to doing it make that phone call to make sure you alleviate other pain that might be unforeseen in trying to you know in, incorporate it on your own so that's my cannon fire for the day oh, well I, I can certainly relate to to some of those scenarios you described and certainly the home network is is the one that if you screw that up it, it's it's pain and you just don't want to be reintroducing that and it could be you know with the best intentions that somebody's had an, an attempt at solving something that you wanted reinstated or, or you're trying to revisit something that you tried to do in the past just always reach out to that home tech pro first i always say to our customers ring the office drop me a whatsapp message if it's something simple I'll, I'll talk you through it. And if it's something that needs a little bit more, then by all means, just schedule us to come around when we're maybe doing a, a maintenance or service visit, and, and we'll, we'll add it to our list, and we'll get that thing sorted out for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Gamble, next week, we're going to continue this series on smart spaces. And I've been, like, thinking, you know, where do we want to go next in the house? You know, and – kitchen is a big one for sure that's like the pulse of you know the entire home but sub rooms off of that you know i was i was thinking you know maybe bathroom but i really think gamble we should talk about the nursery i i think we should talk about the I nursery about yeah <laughs> yeah i, I think I, I know somebody that has a lot of experience with with those that space right now yeah we've, we've been using tech for monitoring our new our newborn baby who's nearly over three months old now um i know and already <laughs> swiping and everything it's incredible yeah. no <laughs> yeah already yeah but we certainly the the nursery and, and and kids bedrooms you know we'll cover let's cover bedrooms and, and the nursery uh, but maybe for the younger the younger people in the household Ooh, i see colored lights <laughs> yeah. I see voice assistants. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fun. All I right, see, cool. I see a I see a big pause button for the Wi-Fi. That's the that's the best feature oh, for yeah. parents. We we provide Mom, at the moment. My Xbox yeah. won't work. Yeah, <laughs> scheduling the the internet. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good okay, one. AJ, it's been great to catch up with you again. That was episode twenty. And uh, join us next week for more smart spaces talk. Oh man, it's awesome. All right, brother, you have a great week, and for. Our friends out there, y'all have a wonderful week as well.
Every month, the Digital Ramble will receive a regular source of income from supporters who've pledged through Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, having your ongoing support means we spend less time thinking about business and more time creating quality content for you. Customized, based in Norfolk, England, are proud sponsors of the Digital Ramble. Check out our all set up services. It's smart home installation with ease. Customize.uk.com. If you're looking to make your basic home smart, check out digitaldelight.com forward slash shop, where they have a variety of different smart home technology solutions that help make smart home shopping easy for you. Check out digitaldelight.com forward slash shop.